Hey, I'm Nick Boy and welcome to Pocket. And today I play space roguelike shoot 'em up Galaxy. Galaxy is an anime-inspired space roguelike from developer 17-Bit. It came out for PS4 last week. Let's jump in and die. The game is broken up into seasons, so with it being a roguelike, obviously when you die, you restart from the beginning. Here, uh, when you die, you restart the season that you're playing. So it's kind of like a TV show. There's five missions or episodes per season. You need to complete all five without dying. You get to the end of a season and then it saves. And then there are five seasons in the game. I've done the tutorial. I know the basics of the game, so let's jump into the first season, Long Night. Nothing left to lose now. Oh, it's so sexy. Oh no. Ooh, so many rockets. Oh, that's beautiful animation. I hope the game looks like that. Okay, so the idea is that I'm basically the last fighter of my squadron. Everything else has exploded. Beam, the uh, blue-haired woman, has found me and brought me to this place. I want to say, like Starship, I guess. And now I need to do what she says because she owns me now. So let's uh, find out what she wants. Okay, first mission. So it's one thumbstick to twirl, constantly twirling like a good pilot. Uh, and then R2 thrust, I got your shoots, and I got missiles. I mean, look at the animation of those asteroids exploding. I imagine it's exactly how it is when you shoot an asteroid. Just a beautiful puff of smoke that disappears. Okay, cool. Let's follow this arrow. He looks bad. He looks bad! So big! I've only just started playing. Okay. Okay. Big but weak. The ship feels quite floaty. It feels kind of like pixel junk shooter. That sort of float. Oh, what are they? What are they? What are they? Oh, there's more! Spores! Spores everywhere! Ooh, they slow me down. They slow me down. The spores have slowed me. Oh, they disappear. It's fine. For the Empire! I love the voice acting in the game. What it sounds like is that it's a Japanese cartoon that they've hired an American voiceover artist to do. It's that sort of real 80s, 90s cartoon energy. Oh, it's so pretty. And there's Lego bits to collect. Lego is your upgrade. This is this is a monument to childhood. Are you are you my friend? Oh, it's a shop? There's just a shop there. I got I can't buy anything. So I'm just gonna ignore the shop. Hey, watch it! Oh, this guy has a lot of sass. Ooh, ship ability. Upgrades. Better ship means better chance of survival. Boost energy. Right, so I can boost with R1. I can go faster. All of the animations are beautiful. I love the design of this game. Even the pause menu has this cool sort of VHS uh, tape flicker. And the, I, the touch I love the most is that the clock is set to midnight, like you've unplugged it and plugged it back in and only just powered it up. I'm hit! There's a surprisingly large amount of voice work in this game. And the missions are randomized. I don't know if they're procedurally generated or if they're randomized missions because during the tutorial, I, I started playing the first stage, this stage, and it was a completely different mission that I was on. I'm on fire. Get out of it. Get out of it! Missiles! Ah! Oh no! Okay, no, we're good guys. We're good. Good. Face the ship, Nick. Stop shooting the air. Crafty! Fire! <laughs> oh no! Just die. Please die. Okay, get out of here. Money in the bank. Whee! Okay, where am I? I'm gonna go up here. Back to that shop. Because I need more health. Because if I die here, then everything is for naught. Oh, no, I want health. I'll take a temp shield though, sure. Okay, so temporary shields, you can see the blue bar down the bottom left says three, uh, but the end one is just a temporary one. So when that one goes, it goes permanently, but when the other two go, it, it, uh, it gets, they get refilled. Am I going in the right direction? No, I'm not. Yep. Oh, never give me a ship. 
the environment layering is really nice and there's also parts where you fly behind things that are in the sort of level in front of you it's it's really gorgeous that little blue bubble around me as well is showing my noise that i'm making which is kind of like the affordable space adventures on wii u which we looked at a few weeks ago and in this game i feel like it would pay to sometimes just slip past enemies like possibly this guy Copy that. Ah! holy crap oh this is... that was so close Oh, I'm like Starbuck. <laughs> Please explode. <gasps> oh, there's another one. Crap. I got her. Oh, I'm a master tactician, unlike Starbuck. She just flies by the seat of her pants. Oh, so damn pants. So damn pants. <laughs> so tense. I got a death grip on this controller. I just gotta relax a little bit. I'm just terrified of exploding, guys. So much good stuff. Look at this! Oh, gross! Now what? Are you telling me I need to go all the way back? Activate the ward beacon. There's a green dot here, but I think it's just salvage. Oh! Food! Food! There's a spider living in the rock? Oh, no! Okay, I'm just constantly going to shoot. Oh, what? Why? Fire! <laughs> this would all be relatively easy if I wasn't on one health. Oh, no! Reverse! Coming in hot! Lucky shot! Oh, goodness. His face is... He, he gets really angry if you watch him when I start shooting. Yeah, he loves it. I think he's got a problem. B-thing! B-thing! Oh! <laughs> you just know I'm gonna die like when I see the beacon something's gonna get me this guy uh, his cockiness in his little another one down does not match my extreme tension oh I did it I did it get out of here rock oh oh yes come on in scrap collector yes oh Oh. All right, that was Galaxy. The game's really fun. I love roguelikes and I really like that sort of bullet hell style space shooter. I feel like that's a good combination of the two. A lot of roguelikes are more about uh, management. You sort of look at like FTL or something about managing a lot of different systems. Whereas this is just about like spraying bullets. It feels more like Binding of Isaac, which is a game I adore, uh, but in space. And you know, with the uh, Japanese people and killer bees. No shields. Ow, shot. Boom, boom. Lots of the movement in the game is actually the sort of anime style animation of things flipping up or sliding in or swinging in. Like when, you know, in Pokemon, they suddenly scream, a giant tear appears here, and then there's just, there's just movement behind their head and it all sort of swings in for a second and then disappears and they're back to normal. And they've really captured that kinetic feeling here. The design is obviously gorgeous and the gameplay feels really good. Like I said earlier, the ship is really floaty and the movement is floaty. I think that will take a while to adjust to because it feels like you want more control over it, but it's all about using your boosters and your reverse. You can break when you hit reverse and booster at the same time, that sort of thing, and using that swing. So once you get accustomed to that, I feel like the navigation is going to be much easier to use here. Uh, but it all feels super, super slick and, and really well designed, as did Skulls of the Shogun. These guys obviously put a lot of effort into what they're making. I regret nothing. The game is exclusive to PS4 for now. It is coming to PC at a later date, and I think it's really, really cool. And there's obviously a heap in here. You're gonna die a bunch. There's five seasons to complete, five missions within there. That's 25 missions to complete, and you're never gonna do it in one go, so there's quite a bit of game here. All right, that's it for today's episode of Pocket. Nick Boy, out. Ugh. Ugh.